My name is Maria Olano and I'm going to be doing my artist presentation on Diane Arbus. This presentation includes mentions of suicide and mental health issues. If you're not comfortable with that, then please do not continue on listening to this presentation. Moving on, I'm going to be talking about four main parts of Diane Arbus's life, mainly about her childhood and her background, and I'm going to be talking about some of her most famous photos, the end of her life, and the legacy that she had left behind. About Diane Arbus. Diane Arbus was an American photographer in the 1950s to the early 1970s. She was known for her intimate black and white artworks, and she took pictures of people who were considered to be outcasts and outsiders, and examples were pictures of people who were transgender, mentally ill, and circus performers. She took these photographs to show another side of New York where she was based. She saw beauty in these people who were thought to be different and discriminated against, and at the end of at the height of her career in 1971, unfortunately, she ended her own life. And years after her death, her work was still celebrated and she was represented in the U.S. Venice Biennial, which explores themes of politics and social issues through performances, sculptures, and installations. More about Diane Arbus, her childhood, she was raised in a rather lavish side of the Upper East Side of New York City. She came from a well-off family, which led her to be able to pursue whatever she was interested in, which was photography. Though her mother had a history of struggling with mental illness and was not in the right way of thinking to support her, while her father was always busy with work. Another reputable man in her life was Alan Arbus, which was her first husband. After he got out of World War II, he became very reputable in the fashion photography business, and he was able to go with Diane to various higher-end magazines such as Harper's Bazaar and Vogue. Though in 1969, they both divorced, and shortly after the divorce, Arbus began to experience depression-like symptoms, and it was seen to be brought on by her hepatitis. Some of her biggest influences in her life were Matthew Brady, Paul Strand, and Eugene Atkett, which she was really good friends with, and she also worked with, at the time, the main director of Harper's Bazaar. Now, moving on into some of her works. The first image is a Puerto Rican housewife, 1963, which showed a middle-aged woman dressed in a revealing dress, which was something that was looked down upon at the time because they expected housewives to dress more modestly and not show their sexuality as much. Though this particular subject was proud of who she was and did not change herself when she became a housewife. The second image is of a young man with his pregnant wife in Washington Square Park, New York City, 1965. This photo showed this man with his pregnant wife and showed how people looked weirdly upon mixed race couples and it was during the height, of, the height of racism and both were also pretty young so there was a stigma around that as well. The next image is of a young man in curlers at home on West 20th Street, New York City, 1966. This image of a man wearing curlers, having shaped eyebrows, long painted nails, were to show gender expression, gender identity, and just gender in general. During this time, it was looked down upon to be anything other than a traditional man or woman, yet this picture shows the man expressing himself, and it was seen by Arbus as him being in between who he was currently and versus who he eventually wanted to be. The next picture is of the identical twins, Roselle, New Jersey, 1967. This photo was of two twin sisters, Kathleen and Colleen Wade, when they were seven years old, and it portrays how the twins were so similar yet different, and it shows how twins have can look alike but have drastically different personalities. The next image is of a Mexican dwarf in his hotel room, New York City, 1970. This image shows a Mexican dwarf leaning against a bedside table with a smile on his face, showing happiness and no sign of exploitation, which, which was an issue that Arbus was accused of by Susan Sontag. Sontag would say that Arbus would exploit her subjects and essentially are belittling, belittling their differences, though this image shows that the person, though what Arbus was trying to show with this image was that you don't have to be a specific type of human being to indulge in regular human activities such as drinking or even being naked. The next image is of the Jewish giant at home in it with his parents in the Bronx, New York City, 1970. The Jewish giant, otherwise known as Eddie Carmel, was just a regular child until his teenage years where he had a rare condition that was caused by a tumor in his pituitary gland that caused him to grow to be eight, nine, and this showed how even the mom was kind of disgusted by her child because he didn't fit the normal image of a teenager at the time and Arbus said that she captured that 
on the mother's face in this image. The quote that Arbus said was, I work from awkwardness, by that I mean I don't like to arrange things. If I stand in front of something instead of arranging it, I arrange it myself. Which essentially means that she doesn't try to change the person or the subject that she's capturing. She instead tries to change herself in order to capture a realistic version of what this person is rather than her making up what she thinks this person or subject is or what it stands for. The end of her life and the new beginning of her career. As I said earlier, she struggles with depression after her divorce in 1969, which was said to be from an unknown hepatitis, though her ex-husband has said that she had went through a lot of ups and downs in her mood and she became violent to herself. And unfortunately, on July 26, 1971, in her West Beth artist community in New York City, she was found dead by her taking her own life. Dan Argus' summary. She was a very creative and impactful photographer who had her own challenges in her, in her life. She brought out different sides of people and exposed how normal everyone was despite of whatever they have that might not be seen as normal. She showed the differences of reality versus what magazines showed. She sought out after people that she saw potential in, and she made an effort to change how she, how she photographed them in order to see the real subject. She would let them be as they were, and she did her best to show who they were as people beyond the exterior that they were judged for. She made way for these freaks to be shown, normalized, and even appreciated for who they were. And for the stereotypical eyes of people to be altered, she showed a different perspective for people, and she opened doors for more photographers to capture realistic and beautiful things. And this is my works cited page.